Hey everybody, guess who it is? It's Nick Romick. Hey. <laughs> so, uh, I've got a chain rig here. So I'm setting up this uh, really cool uh, Dynamics thing, um, how to create a uh, chain um, using Dynamics. We're not using hair, we're not using cloth. We're just using your out-of-box Maya 2017 uh, just dynamics. So this is what we're creating uh, just from some geometry that I've just created for a project we're working on. You may look like a little bit like Lego. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Anyway, so that's pretty much what the what we're going for. You could tweak it. You can add, you know, play around with gravity, all that other stuff. But uh, I'll show you exactly what we're doing here. Okay. So the first thing is that you're going to need to import some sort of geometry or create it. Uh, I've got this chain OBJ file. Uh, here it's all one piece so uh, what I do after I, I import it is uh, kind of just separate and uh, you know you you really want to go in here and go to your uh, modify freeze transformation reset transformation and center your pivot uh, I do that anytime I'm messing around with stuff uh, one thing that I'd have to let you know though is about this particular one and not the video that we watched before is the dimensions are smaller uh, so this, because it's going to be Lego, it's going to uh, be affected a little bit different. Um, so, I mean, if we go over to the top view, so I'm getting off here, we got create measure tools and we're going to do distance from here to here. We've got 28 units just to confirm what that means. I'm just going to general, sorry, uh, preferences, settings. So that's centimeters. So that's 23 centimeters. That works for me for what I'm doing. But if you wanna, if you wanna have it, because we're dealing here with uh, with you know gravity and, and actual dynamics, you're gonna wanna make sure your units are correct. So um, I'm just gonna delete that just so we can keep going. But keep in mind that this uh, is gonna react a little bit differently because it is small. So, uh, okay, again, so we've got all this, we've got individual pieces. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna grab two of these. Uh, we're, gonna use, we're gonna switch over to our effects here, shelf or uh, menu set, and we're gonna go to field solvers and we're gonna create a pin constraint. Now, don't just create the pin constraint. Click this little button here to get the options. Here's your options right now. Now, uh, if you go uh, reset settings, you're gonna have nail. Uh, we wanna, obviously we're gonna have pin. Uh, and then interpenetrate, big deal, because if you don't have this checked, you're gonna run into some major issues once you get to the point uh, where you actually run your animation, your simulation, because it's going to interpenetrate, and once that happens, it's gonna just freeze and blow up, right? Uh, and then, so click that, check that. So we're gonna hit apply with those two selected. I'm gonna close this here, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do that for every other one. So we're gonna take the second one and the third one, we're gonna hit G. We're gonna take the third one and the fourth one, we're gonna hit G and we're just gonna keep doing that, hitting G all the way along so that everything is constrained to the other one. So just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then here we go. And then we've got the last two. Uh, with this one here, uh, I've already given it the pin constraint from this one to that one, but we're also going to do another one here. So we're going to do a nail constraint. Uh, I'm just going to click on that because that's okay with, with whatever uh, options there are. I'm going to go in here to four and I'm going to use my move tool to kind of stick that out a little bit more so I can see the, 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 um, the point there. So we're going to go back to five. So that's pretty cool in itself. We've got all the constraints. Everything's all good. But we need to add some forces to that. So I'm going to create a window. Or sorry, you're going to go to a window outliner. And then with your outliner, forget about all these pin constraints. Just close that. So you're going to grab your chain links and your anchors. So uh, so that's the poly surface. It would be really good if you could like name them. Um, but I just didn't, for the purpose of this, I'm just not bothering. So grab all of those ones in the outliner. We're going to go fields, solvers, and we're going to click on drag. Uh, this one, drag, you can kind of mess around with the settings. Uh, we've assigned the drag already, so we can actually click on here, control A, uh, get your attribute, and you can mess around with different things. One thing that I like to do is kind of 
uh, get in there and just and see what kind of settings that we can change and play with the magnitude, attenuation, uh, and then in here velocity just to get that uh, result you want. But uh, we're just going to skip that. We're going to do it again. We're going to select all of these chain and anchors um, in the outliner, and then we're going to give it another one, and that's going to be gravity, and uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. So um, actually, once that's done, really, you can just go back here. We're just going to put a you thousand know, here. Oops. And I was telling you guys, it's a little quicker. Uh, it's a lot better than you know hair or sorry the hair in the um, end cloth. But anyway, we're gonna kind of do a little simulation here. So there you can see it kind of. It's actually pretty fast in the viewport. Um, hair and everything else doesn't really work that fast. But uh, let's just go back, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend that I didn't listen to myself uh, when I went into. Let's take a look here. The liner. I'm gonna go into the uh, the drag. Was it drag field? Oh no, sorry. Here, if you click on e any of these, Control A, you've got the options for this. And this, if you click on the rigid solver, you've got the options. And this isn't just for this one constraint. It's the solver that they're all using, which is really neat. So you can mess around with like, you know, step size, scale, velocity, all that stuff, and that will affect all of them. Um, and I think it was yeah, it was the pin cons or these constraints here. So if we turn the interpenetrate off on that, um, let's take a look and see what happens when we do our animation. It's going to get to this point and it should, oh, I guess not. Okay. Sorry about that. But uh, if you do it um, when you actually create it, yeah, here we go. There we go. There we got some interpenetration problems. It's going to cause all sorts of issues and it's going to crap the bed. Um, so other than that, yeah, that's that's what you got. You can go in uh, any time. Sorry, this thing is freaking out. But you go in through the outliner uh, when you're done, um, like I said, and just uh, go in and play with the drag field. Sorry. Uh, play around with these settings here. Uh, there's some really cool ones under so your gravity as well. You can play with that. But uh, drag field is kind of neat. You can mess around with all these things here, magnitude, attenuation, speed, attenuation, stuff like that. Um, and that will get you, uh, get you where you want to go. Also, um, you can mess around with this stuff in the rigid solver. Uh, there's solver states. You can turn off bounciness to make it a little less, uh, a little less crazy, just depending on what you're going for. But I found a lot of, uh, a lot of the tutorials online just weren't clear or they were just, just just not clear overall or they were just crazy and they're going into end cloth and stuff like that so if you just want to do something simple uh, this is probably your best bet and again um, if you wanted to uh, add a control curve so I'm um, just gonna go here I'm just gonna create that rotate it 90 degrees and just so you can you know kind of control your anchor uh, it's gonna shrink that just is just super basic but it is what it is. Okay, so um, now I've got that. With any control, especially curves, any control whatsoever, you want to grab this and do again your uh, modify freeze transformations, reset, and I'm just going to set it to pivot too. I like to do that. Okay. okay, so now you've got the control curve. Uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, grab a show and turn off the, what is it here? dynamic constraints so that you don't actually select them so um, so we're gonna actually first of all I'm gonna turn that back on um, dynamic constraints and I'm gonna grab all of these and then I'm gonna select uh, I'll shift select this hit P parent but uh, if you move that it's gonna just only move that so you want to turn again the uh, dynamic constraints off and then you can do the same thing with that I'm going to deselect this, I'm going to deselect that gravity, whatever else is selected there, and then, then shift select and then P, and then that way you'll have yourself a movable rig so you can kind of like rotate it or whatever you want to do, and then start the uh, counter there, and then you go. You can parent that to other things too, it's really neat. Uh, you can even animate that if you really wish. Um, let's say we just kind of start here, set that, and then we go to like, I don't know, 200 frames, and then rotate that, 
you could have some really cool fun with that anyway. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if I was clear enough, if I was clear and more clear than everyone else, uh, that'd be great. Thanks.